Well, folks, welcome to one more edition of Politics and Right. I'm Egberto Willis, your host. Thank you so kind for being part of the show. We are going to have a great show for you today. Look, we have a great interview set up uh, that uh, with, with a couple of folks with something that's happening here in uh, Humble, Texas. But I tell you what, what is so important about it? It is happening all over every part of the world that you can think of. All over it is happening. Where school boards are being taken over, whether it is uh, taken over by right-wing, what I can only call right-wing zealots that really care nothing about kids, but care only about things that matter to them. And you know what? It really isn't much. So, I mean, it hurts to see these people have that much power uh, in in what they're doing. Anyway, welcome aboard, folks. How are all my peeps doing today? How are all my peeps? I'm still setting things up, as you can see. I'm still setting things up, as you can see. But I am going to be ready in a little bit because I need to load one other video that I think I got done or I thought I had done, but evidently I don't. But okay, here it is the video that I want to get placed in there. Let me move it to the right place and then I can get, uh, I can put all my devotion into the show. Remember that song? Devotion by Earth, Wind, and Fire. Those were the days, right? Those were the days. Anyway, folks, we got a great program for you today. We got a great program for you today. Anyhow, welcome aboard. Bridge MCP is in the house. Lee Grant is in the house. Eric Hayes is in the house. Yvette Avery Herod, or beautiful Yvette, is in the house. Great, great piece that you sent me there, Yvette. I love that video. With that, that, that video was to die for the explanation of the uh, the Palestinian issue, it Palestinian Hamas uh, Israel issue. Spot on. I hope you got my response. Um, who else is in the house? Uh, Michael Rudnan is in the house as well. Look, I'm going to start off with the humble ISD thing here because I want I want this to play and then I want it to replay. We got to get a lot of people on this issue because tomorrow is the vote. So let me get started with that and then we'll move on to the Palestinian issue. I have a uh, a, a piece that I pulled down from MSNBC. I or rather I, I scraped off the screen from MSNBC with a doctor who is speaking. But actually, before that, let me read your note. Uh, let's see. Eric, uh, Eric Hayes says, here is a thought. Most people uh, are having have to become fiscally conservatives by reality of the biodynamics economy. Who would have thought? And it's counter to what is told now by leaders. That's not true, but I'll let it slide for now. Second one by Eric says, latest spending by our great government. At what, what point do we do say enough money has gone into LMI want to shed and start spending elsewhere to produce greater flood risk? Uh, I, I'm, I'm not going to continue that because I'm not up to speed on the flooding mechanism, etc. I got to do my research on that one. Uh, let's see. Uh, Shiva Las Vegas is in the house. Welcome, Shiva. Uh, let's see what else we got. Uh, let's see what else we got. Latest spending. No, I got that. Bree says, so I just want to say, at the Ask Egberto Anything Saturday, which I have not gone to in a few months, that it was very much enjoyable. Type in chatting, we do not hear the person's voice or inflections, and that is needed. Eric was really good. We all agreed on so many points. Eric is a good guy. I told you, I used to go lift weights with Eric, and I love Eric. Sometimes I want to slap him around a little bit, but I love Eric. Eric is my brother. Anyway, Eric was really good. We all agreed on so many points, says Bridge MCP, because we heard the voice behind the t the text. I encourage you all to attend at least one to hear our PDR Posse talk. We have a wonderful PDR Posse. I can tell you that. We, you know, I mean, uh, Lee's been there. Uh, Bridge uh, has been there. I don't think I've seen Yvette Avery at, at, at or any of our pilot thing. Yvette probably saying, you ain't getting me to come to know Ask Egberto anything on the weekend. I'm going to sit down and get my stuff together. Yvette, we still love you, girl. Shiva Las Vegas, I don't think I've ever seen you there either. But again, I repeat, we love you all. We absolutely love you all. Oh, you know, I, I, I am going to, look, if I hadn't known better, I would be saying that uh, Bridge is crushing on 
Eric. Because she just loved that Eric is muscular and is one of those macho men that lift weights and all of that. But each, I'm not as buff as he is, but I got a little bit of a little chest, a match just a, a, a little bit better than flat. You know, I'm okay. All right, I'm a little bit okay. Anyway, folks, uh, let me go ahead and get into the program. Stop playing around. Let's go ahead and play the uh, the, the Natalie. Natalie and Ellie tape here. Ellie is the president of the Kingwood Area Democrats and and also uh, Carter. Natalie Carter is an activist. But let's go ahead and get busy and then we'll get the rest on the other side, my peeps. Let's go. Welcome to another edition of Politics and Right. I'm Egberto Willis, your host. Uh, look, as you guys know, politics begins at home. Politics begins locally. And interestingly, one of the things that many have forgotten is that they have to work locally. Lucky for us, we have people in the community who knows, know that. And that is exactly what they're doing. With us today, we have Eli Porras, who is the president of the Kingwood Area Democrats and doing a hell of a job reinvigorating the community, making sure that uh, people are engaged again. And we have somebody making a big difference, not just talking about it, but actually saying, I am going to be part of the solution. That is uh, Natalie Carter, who is a uh, former humble ISD candidate, but altogether, she is a community organizer, somebody that's making a difference in our community. Ladies, welcome to Politics Done Right. Thank you for having us. I, I, absolutely so. Well, look. Thank let, you. Let, let me tell you, one of the reasons that I wanted to talk to you is, um, you know, I got a text that concerned me. Uh, first of all, uh, Natalie, as somebody who's been, uh, who was about to become a board member, you know that the school district decided, I love that cat. The school district, <laughs> this, I love that cat. That cat, that's <laughs> going to be the star of the program. Uh, I, I noticed that um, the school decided that in a place where healthcare is needed, and you know, the United States have likely the best and likely the lousiest healthcare system all at once. The school decided to do something about it. Humble ISD decided to do something about it. Now we have an issue. Why don't you start by telling me exactly what it is that the school intended to do? And your cat is just fine. I apologize. I have a cat and a dog that are just, you know, emotionally bonded to me. So, and I apologize. The, and so, they are part of the family. They are part of the family. They, they wear blue quite a bit. So, um, so yes, you're right. Uh, you know, definitely Humble ISD partnered with Memorial Herman. They were actually approached, um, Humble ISD was approached by Memorial Herman because of the surge of um, pediatric ER visits. And um, our CEO or the CEO of Memorial Herman partnered or approached Dr. Elizabeth Fagan, who is the superintendent of Humble ISD, with this idea of a partnership by starting a student health clinic um, located at Humble High School, which would serve as like kind of like the Mecca where they have multiple schools that feed into this Title I school like um, Lakeland Elementary, um, North Bend Elementary, Ross Sterling. Um, Humble Middle, they're all Title I schools, meaning that they are socioeconomically disadvantaged and challenged, as well as they're part of a majority of underrepresented groups of Hispanic and African-American students. And so um, it was a great partnership. All of the services that would be provided by Memorial Hermann would be 100% free. And there was even discussions about providing transportation at zero cost, zero cost to the taxpayers, as well as to the parents and the students that are partaking in this amazing program. So that's how the, that was the genesis of this whole um, partnership. Um, and we're super excited. Um, you know, there was a bond that was passed to actually build a physical building um, to support this initiative. And right now there's a slight delay because of, of course, construction delays, you know, noted across, you know, the country from just the lag of COVID recovery. And so right now they had to represent this um, this partnership because we needed to use temporary buildings since our actual building due to the construction delays we're not going to be ready for the next year or two and so that's where we are right now okay so that explains what the intent the intent was to take care of the underprivileged people that are underprivileged now i, I want to make one correction here because i think 
as long as we always keep the narrative that the reason we're building these entities is to help those underprivileged and we classify the underprivileged as black and Hispanic, et cetera, a lot of our white audience is going to look to some extent and say, well, that isn't something that serves all. Let's make it be clear here. Yes, a lot of the underprivileged are black and Latinos, but in that era, there's a hell of a lot of underprivileged white kids also. I have friends who are driving them to school every day. So that's a statement. Absolutely. Uh, that's a statement. So, so I, Absolutely. I want the narrative to be correct here. This You're is to correct. help everybody in the school district. Absolutely, and I apologize for that. Um, I just go off of the data supported by that school, the demographics. I think the majority of the students there, I wanna say it's all 82% would be, right. you know, underrepresented groups. And my apologies, you're absolutely right. This doesn't limit, this doesn't exclude any group at all. And not only um, that, this but is a free every group, service. Not to talk over you, but every group as well, the, a lot of the poor kids, they all need it. They're all deserving. And they are there. I just want to get that out there. So this is an all inclusive thing. Well, look, Ellie, you are a very. Uh, Can I interject? Yeah, Can yes, ma'am. Please do. Quick? Yes. Because um, I because this needs to be this is a very important point that she made. Um, Herman Memorial Herman approached Umbel ISD because their ERs have been um, way too busy. Mm -hmm. So it was in their best interest to have this clinic so that the ER and the hospitals are are free you know uh they're for the waiting lines to be less and um so that the population in general will have better access to the ER like it wasn't um by Umbel ISD that went to Herman Memorial it was or Memorial Herman it was them because they needed a solution to clear up um their problem and you know, that, Ellie, that is such a very important point that you just made there, because what you're telling me as well is that this is not just, oh, we're solving a problem for Humboldt. This is solving the, pro the uh, community problem, offloading right. some of the kids to places where they, there's easier access for the entire community. It means longer wait lines at the emergency rooms, et cetera. It's a very important point to make. Now, Ellie, uh, to you, as, uh, as somebody working in, in the community, you have noticed a certain group of parents trying to make an issue out of a particular segment of that story, of that contract to be signed by Umbelisi. What's the issue that you hear from the people out there that I, we know they're misled, but what have you heard? Well, they have a concern with the family, family planning part of the contract. And because that is so all encompassing um, in general health, which Natalie can speak much um, clearer on <clears throat> all what that actually entails. Um, and so they cannot amend the contract with Memorial Herman to exclude that. So they want to get rid of the family planning, you know, i.e., in their minds, abortion. And, but we need to go into this understanding that every single service has to be parent approved a child uh, you know a child 15 17 you know 13 cannot go in there on their own they have to have parental approval so in a, in other words because of of the misinformation that many of these otherwise likely good people have they are willing to cut the benefits of easy access by many students at Umbel ISD and other uh, at Umbel ISD from getting good care. Uh, I tell you what, uh, Natalie, why don't you explain exactly what the cause, what, what's the reason that these folks are uh, concerned about and, and blasting out emails right now. And, and in fact, this is something that I hope uh, the, 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 the good people are working on. Right now, the Umbel board is getting blasted by no vote emails. So there is, and that is from people who have nothing better to do than sit down, drink tea, and 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 find something to complain about. The the working people, the people who are most dependent on this, they don't have the time to sit down behind a keyboard and continuously send emails. So before I come to you, Natalie, I want to run back to to Eleanor. I mean to Ellie. I don't like to call <laughs> Ellie. It's Ellie. It's Ellie. It's Ellie. 
want to run back to Ellie. Ellie, what are you doing? What is your group doing to ensure that those who have the ability right now to start letting the humble board understand that not because you're getting a whole lot of emails from these guys, does it mean that that is what the majority of the population actually wants? So we have been, we have been writing physical letters um, with our uh, complaints. We have been emailing, calling. Um, Kingwood Era Democrats has been sending out emails to all of our uh, members and followers um, to come to the school board meeting tomorrow and stand up. And if you would like to speak, you know, we would love that. Just show up and say that, um, that there is opposition to that no vote. I mean, definitely. Oh. No, there is opposition. This is not going to be an easy win. Absolutely. So, so Natalie, Tell us uh, what is it exactly now that uh, within this contract that's that's creating that problem and what is it that we need to do to let the board know that, look, uh, we can't allow a temporary ruckus, which is which is all it is. These guys are going to raise hell for a while and they don't care. Those kids that that are going to be left in with 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 the after the shrapnel is gone. They are the ones that are going to be left without health care as these people go on to their next their, their, their next issue. Right. And so, yes. And so with this, um, with this um, kind of bringing this notion of the clinic back up, of course, there was a, an evaluation or reevaluation of the contents of the contract. Um, and as Ellie stated earlier, that this is a, a comprehensive clinic that's going to occur where they're going to give you sports physicals, um, preventative services, um, dental care, nutritional service, mental health um, services as well. Um, and of course, within within those services, you do have the option to seek family planning services. And as we all know, that family planning or birth control accessibility does not necessarily promote promiscuity. It doesn't, you know completely discount absenteeism or abstinence, sorry, not absenteeism, but abstinence. Um, but what it does is it gives comprehensive care because we use oral contraceptives to treat other conditions such as ovarian cysts, polycystic ovarian syndrome, amenorrhea, um, just a whole host of things, acne. Um, even in actually in young boys with heart conditions, we use Viagra to help with cardiac contractility. So um, these services will be at their disposal. And of course, you know, you have the pearl clutching Christians who claim Christians, and I say that in air quote, because I'm, I believe, you know, in, in, in Christianity and in Jesus Christ, he's my savior. Um, but they're clutching their pearls at the notion that there's access to, you know, contraceptives, and we're promoting promiscuity by having services that will allow students to gain access to some of these things. And that's just not the case. Um, and as Ellie stated earlier, that you have to have parental consent in order to be able to see, be seen in the clinic. It's going to be evaluated annually. Um, parents do get after visit summaries electronically. They're encouraged to actually be there physically when they actually have an appointment, if allowed, or if their schedule permits. So it's just essentially, you know, um, just the dog whistle to a lot of the dominionists, and I don't even call them conservatives anymore, radicals, they're dominionists that want to essentially infringe and control every aspect of everyone's lives other than their own. I think, I, I hope, I don't know who are all the speakers, but I hope that uh, some of the speakers go with some of the statistics. The people that are doing more harm to our kids right now, uh, when we look at whether it's trans or whether it's what whatever you want to define somebody's identity by, the one doing the most damage, 14% of all calls coming in for child abuse right now, child sexual abuse, is by pastors. So something that they may want to consider that if we decided to go ahead and start doing the stats on who are the people harming kids right now, it is not a, it, it's not giving them a, a family, it's not giving them health care. It's not giving them, do you need birth control, et cetera. The most promiscuous is aren't the ones that are doing these things. But Ellie, so let's talk about uh, what's going to be done now. I think the board meeting is on Tuesday, the 17th of October, correct? Yes, the board meeting is tomorrow, October 17th um, at 7 p.m., right, Natalie? Yes. And, um, you know, you'll sign in uh beforehand there's a phone number to call if you want to be a speaker and i believe they are putting the whole contract up for vote so uh it'll be a yay or nay and i would like to interject uh, you know another statistic 
Um, you know, we would all love to think that our children, our teenagers don't have sex. And we know that that is not true. <clears throat> the fastest growing uh, group that get sexually transmitted diseases are the 15 to 24 year olds. So without comprehensive sex education and access to birth control, this is gonna be an, an epidemic. It just is. We cannot put our heads in the sand and just think, oh, my kid's not gonna have sex and he's never gonna have an STD. Um, we have to protect our children and you can only do that with um, education and knowledge. Now, interestingly, um, in as much as we make mention of these, the, the, sex, uh, the sex issue and that sort of stuff, that is such a very small part of this whole entire contract. This contract is to give health care to students, health care to, to, to make sure that they are taken care of, and to try to centralize it on a very small part, family care. You know, I always tell people, if you don't like something as a parent, you don't have to do it, but don't hold back. And I hope somebody brings this up, Ellie. Yes. Don't have one parent, two parent, 10 parents put the lives of thousands of parents in jeopardy because that is exactly right. what a no vote is. Allowing a small, loud sect to decide to have an a unhealthy population you know i i get a little bit more graphic when i'm on my program but since i'm with two decent ladies i won't make the mistake of uh, of, of saying that at all anyhow um, well can i interject egberto real quick but do. you are correct yes. there's about um uh, there's there, yes these services only encompass about three percent of all services so that means 97 percent of the you know the clinic is going to be utilized for other services. In fact, the New England, um, the Journal of American Medicine just came out with this, um, a great comprehensive study of the efficacy of school clinics. And they noted that most of the children um, had an improvement in their, or actually were seen and had noted significant improvement in the therapy for asthma. So um, if that statistic proves to be true, which I, I'm pretty confident it is, because it was a very, very well done study, that most of the kids are going to be treated for other conditions outside of this family planning realm. So it's really important for us to not throw the baby out with the bathwater just because um, someone has access to birth control that might not even need it for, or actually use it for prevention of pregnancy, but other right. causes as well. To right. every and board, then, oh, go ahead. I just want to interject again on top of that. So if you have a child that has um, gets a cold or the flu or RSV right. and quick intervention, then they don't pass it on to the rest of the school, to their family members. Um, economically, parents aren't going to have to stay home from work. So productivity for the community, um, the teachers, like this, this is such a, it's not even a trickle down effect. This is just, it just expands um, to every single part of the community. And we need to, you know, remember again that this was Memorial or Herman Memorial, Memorial Herman, <laughs> that wanted this because of the ER overflow. But Ellie, just like uh, like, like uh, Natalie says here, I mean, th those points are so important. You are saving you're increasing productivity because kids now can go to a clinic close by before they start spreading stuff around the campus to both students and teachers. I tell you what, and I hope somebody brings this up. The first person, the first person that dies of COVID at school, the first person that, that gets severely ill at, for asthma at school or has a bleed out or whatever at school. Oh, if anyone who voted no, for not having health care in the school, the death of that person or the illness of that person or the maiming of that person is on them. I hope I, 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 I hope you both of you have great points. I hope you, you get to the speakers who are going to speak tomorrow night and let them know to make the board aware of these issues that you guys so intelligently pointed out, point out because I think it's essential. A lot of these people are talking off the top of their heads. They don't really think things through. They're not pragmatic. We have to remember right now, they frown on critical thinking. You all, you both are critical thinkers and we're lucky mm -hmm. to have you in the community 
defending these issues at the school. Give me a closer, Natalie. Right, and thank you. So and it's not only, this is a call to action to anybody that agrees with us currently. Um, all the stakeholders, we're inviting you to come to our Humble ISD board meeting tomorrow at 7 p.m. where we can band together. We plan on wearing black to stand in solidarity um, against these atrocities and stand up to the partisan you know, ideologue that will come and try to put on a show tomorrow. Please, 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 you could send emails. You could, you could definitely show up. Uh, send good vibes, prayers, support. We would greatly appreciate you all showing up and standing in solidarity with us. Uh, Ellie, why don't you give me a closer and include where the, the address, if you have it with you, and who these folks can email. If you don't have I, it, it's fine. I'll, I'll, I'll print it. I don't I'll, have I'll, it right in front of me. That's um, fine. I, I, would like to, I would like to say that both Natalie and I are nurses. So mm -hmm. we do know what we are talking about. And <laughs> it affects the community as a whole. So, I hope, um, and we do wear black and and stand in solidarity. As nurses, I hope both of you are going to be there speaking. I didn't just say a parent. I hope <laughs> both of you are going to be there speaking. So if both of you haven't signed up, uh, please, we need your voices. Your voices are essential. My name is Ig. Thank you so kindly, Natalie. And Ellie, for uh, for giving this not more than a service announcement, thank you so kindly for being on Politics Done Right. Thank you for having us. Thank you. All right. Uh, believe it or not, this is something that is occurring throughout throughout the country, where anything positive that a school board wants to do or a school wants to do, we have these right wingers come in and try to see if they can find anything that somehow goes against their, their false ideologies to then come in and cause an issue. It's, it's a very, very bad thing. And in this case, what they're doing could actually harm kids. Here we have the private sector Memorial Herman saying, I am going to come into your schools. And we are, and of course, there's an ulterior motive, goodwill and several other things. And of course, they're going to get the Medicaid from the students who... Um, who qualify for Medicaid, et cetera. But, they, so, but they're doing a good thing. They're coming into the school to take care of kids. I, I love that. I love that. And who complains? Right-wing parents because of two words in the, in, in the contract that they signed, family planning. Something that is just, again, important, right? Uh, contraception. They claim they don't like abortions, but they don't want to ease contraception, et cetera. Look. The inconsistency, the lack of values, the lack of morals of the right, uh, of many on the right, I should say, the, the many on the leadership of the right is pathetic. It's psychopathic. And you want, but then again, it really isn't because what they're trying to do is make a dollar or two. Anyhow, folks, anybody wants to, let's see, the lack of morals no, 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 no. I mean, I mean, on the right, sir, on the leadership on the right, there is a moral lack. And look at who's about to ascend to the speakership of the United States uh, House of Representatives. Somebody who allowed, think about this, the person that they are about to make speaker of the house is somebody who turned his eyes, turned his head as boys were being sexually abused on the wrestling team for the college that he worked for. Think about that. That's who will be ascending to the speakership of the United States Congress. Also, somebody who formed a part of the attempted coup, the unconstitutional attempted coup against the United States of America. That's who is likely to be speaker effective tomorrow. I want you guys to understand the depravity. So when, when uh, Mike Cisak tells who lacks morals, no, sir. The people who lack morals are the people. Look, it, it, it is almost like uh, they, they decided to have the next speaker who walks in, in Speaker Hastert's shoes. The speaker before the former Republican speaker was a guy, uh, well, two speakers down, a guy named Hastert. And Hastert was thrown in jail. He was paying off. Dennis Hastert was the Republican Speaker of the House. 
he was thrown in jail for having sex with underage boys. Yeah, that's who was the that was at then the longest serving Republican Speaker of the House. And now they're bringing somebody that has the same ilk. In other words, uh, El Senor Jim Jordan was the guy who turned his head when another coach was abusing kids, boys. It's amazing. Remember I talk about uh, projection? When I talk about projection, that's what I'm talking about. The same things that these people always talk about are the things that they themselves doing. They're the ones who abuse boys. They're the ones who abuse kids. They're the ones who corrupt kids. And then they talk about progressives? Your folks are in jail for doing these things. Uh, let's see, who do we have in jail for abu uh, sexually abusing a kid? Let me see who. Name me a person of the stature of Hastert who went to jail for abusing kids. And then we have these folks that were trying to tell us that Hillary Clinton and the, in the pizza shop and how they abuse all the, you know, what we need to do is find a pizza shop where there are some right wingers doing these things to kids. Because anytime they accuse you of something, you know that it's something that they are doing. So we need to find that pizza shop that that republic that that some uh, Republican right wingers are using. Then we may be okay, right, Lee, brother Lee Grant? Come on, man. Will you help us find it, brother Lee Grant? All right, all right. Look, I have a touching, a very touching interview that I hope that I hope enough people saw on, I think it was Sunday, Saturday or Sunday. And he also gave another interview today, but I did get the interview today. The interview is between uh, Dr. I can't remember his name. Th this doctor, I think he works with Doctors Without Borders. He has a cry out there. All he's asking for is for the West to treat the Palestinians as humans. He doesn't condone the killings that occurred last week. He doesn't condone that at all. Of course not. Who does? But in the process, uh, uh, under a thousand, I mean, uh, uh, I think it was like 12 or 1300 Israelis got killed. Horrendous, terrible. That was done by terrorists. But in the process, Israelis has killed Thousands of kids and parents. This guy here comes on TV and says, last night I lost 17 of my family members, bombed to death. They interviewed him today. That number is now up to 49. I want you to listen to this, and then we'll take it on the other side. It is sad, it is sad, it is sad. Dr. Fadeh Judah received tragic news this week from Gaza. He learned that 17 members of his family were killed in an Israeli airstrike. Dr. Judah is himself the son of refugees, and he joins me now. He's also an award-winning Palestinian-American poet, a physician based in Austin, Texas, a former doctor with Doctors Without Borders in Zambia and South Sudan. Dr. Judah, thank you so much for taking the time to be with us. I know that this is a difficult time. I think first, we want to know how you are coping, how you are processing this. Uh, I already have said elsewhere, we, we are... You know, we wake up, we go to bed uh, uh, with what we uh, wake up with, uh, the same horrible concern and flashbacks uh, of memories that go back decades. I'm 53, my father is 90, um, in good health. Um, so, um, you know, um, I have to ask you, why does a Palestinian such as myself appear on American TV only to represent the dead and the dying? When do Palestinians get to be a regular feature of the American consciousness and psyche so that we are people who can speak of life, of all aspects of life, 
not just a representation of death, dying, and absolute horror. St- still I think we have to, no, go ahead, Dr. Judah, go ahead. Yeah, I think we have to ask ourselves deep questions about how we do not, in any sense of the word, away from flowery language, we do not see, we have not seen Palestinians as equal human beings in the U.S. for decades. I'm not sure we ever did. Starting from the point of equality of the humanity of the Palestinians anywhere, and they are not perfect people, no people are perfect, but everyone is equal. Just to accept that in the U.S., I think, is unthinkable. And to imagine that to accept the equality of the humanity of Palestinians will actually solve so many problems. Common sense is uncommon, a shortcoming in all humans, but it is a particular problem of the language of power. We talk about siege, I mean, the Hamas, the the war, the whatever. Nobody thought for two decades to lift the siege off of Gaza. Simple things. The children in Gaza, 40% of people in Gaza are, are children or adolescent. What future have they had for the last 20 years? What future for the next 20 years? What is the price of equating suffering? Where does it stop in the human mind? Even if you permit me your title, Israel Hamas war, as if somehow there's this isolation between an entire people and a a few bad apples, so to speak. It is not that, it has been a total dehumanization of the Palestinian people in Gaza, in the West Bank, anywhere. Just start from speaking of the Palestinians as truly equal human beings to anyone, anywhere, especially in English. Dr. Drew, I want to to pick up on a piece that you referenced here, which is the displacement, especially because it's happening amidst a global displacement of young people. And as we have watched, that has consequences that extend generation to generation. So as you look forward, on that question of what happens to these young people, not just in the days and weeks ahead, but beyond what questions are top of mind? What are you thinking about? What is it you want us to know? I I would like people to know that it is very possible that a, a further dispossession of Palestinian land is afoot, that a further, um, uh, displacement and removal of Palestinian people is afoot that the possibility of those people having lived through horror for the last 20 years who are as as you as you would or i might i might with my own children not want to return to a place that has been utter destruction is very possible the depletion of palestinian souls and numbers on the ground is afoot these are serious things this is a repetition of the dreaded words of ethnic cleansing of the Palestinians, dreaded words in English, of ethnic cleansing of Palestinians yet again. I am a physician and I want to ask even in general, when will the medical community in the US as physicians say, for example, no life is better than another. You know, we have in medical schools and in, in, in institutions across the U.S. declarations about this war that are, that, that are not even both sided. They're one sided. But as a physician, I do not turn away from the poor, the uninsured, um, the, you know, people I like, people I don't like, people who like me, people who don't like me. We uphold a level of impartiality and neutrality in the name of humanitarian humanitarianism and humanity. And and here we are, a medical, the largest, most wonderful medical system in the world, and we can't come up with a statement that says we are for all lives as equal. So I think the problems are deep, and we have in the media as a major field of creating the culture industry in the US to begin to really work hard and bravely and courageously at making sure that Palestinians are truly seen as beautiful and equal people to anyone because they are, because no one is more beautiful or less beautiful than another in this world.
if people were to understand what this doctor is saying, uh, it would be immediately evident that there is not an ounce of hate, not an ounce of, uh, of ill will, not an ounce of any of that. His only concern is please, please treat us as we should, as you should treat us. Treat us as we deserve to be treated. That's what it's all about. Treat us as we deserve to be treated. Anyway, folks, anybody wants to call in and talk to us, 281-823-7747. Remember, we wanted to hear voices. Breach spoke about voices. Hey, Breach, why don't you call and tell folks how great you enjoyed Ask Egberto anything along with everybody who attended or even Eric, why don't you call in? I want to start using this stuff a bit more often. It's set 281 823 7747. Be a part of the conversation. Sea parte de la conversación, porque that is how we roll here. 281 823 7747. Lee Grant, why don't you call in? Let's see. How could uh, Mike C. Sex says, How should Jews work with people that just want them? Uh, let's see who we've got here. Uh, speak to me. Who do I have the honor of speaking with? Who do you think? This is our beautiful Bridge MCP. So, Bridge, how did you enjoy? Well, before that, give me your thoughts of the day. I don't even want to be the one directing what you say. Give me your thoughts of the day. Um, it's hard because you see so many people with misinformation or ignorance of what's going on in Israel, Palestine, and the history of it. I mean, that's why I sent you that little clip. Right. And people should know what really the past was, what really happened. And I do not, do not condone Hamas at all. I, I, I don't, because that makes the Palestinians look worse. They are not their governing body. They don't have one. Hamas made themselves that, but that's not what the Palestinians want. But there's no one else there to help them because everyone's afraid of the powers that be around there. You know, Iran and all that crap. So it's very hard to see people say things. And I know they're good people, and but they don't understand what it's like to be divided in your own country and what happened to it. And I do. I think you do. And so it's hard for me. I have to like, like turn it off sometimes. And E two two four seven is in the same boat. He's very sad about all of this. He, he put a whole post about it. It's killed him. And um, it's very hard. It really is. It's it's really hard to, uh, you know. But we've been through this before with them. I mean, I think we're the same age. You know. You know what is different to me, uh, Bridge. This one to. It all. It, anytime I see the killing, it has always been bad. But you know, uh, this one really got to me because yeah. I knew that, given the number of Israelis that got murdered, that Israel would be coming back with a revenge on those who least had anything to do with that. Right. And I knew what it was going to look like, and when I saw. Look, it's always like a 10 to 1 margin. You know, we always talk about the Palestinians being the aggressors, but somehow they end up with uh, 10 times the dead people that than the Israelis end up with, right? It's an asymmetrical warfare. That is what asymmetric, asymmetrical warfare looks like. And sadly, I knew that if there were 12 or 1300 Israelis that got killed, hold your horses. This stuff won't be over till right. over 10,000 Palestinians are dead. And that's a lot of dead, yeah. innocent people. It is. And they have no place to go, nothing to do. I mean, no one to turn to. Everyone's against them because of Hamas, but that's not their leader. They're just regular human beings. I, I am sure, I'm positive that if some catastrophe happened here, I'm not going to say 9 11, but some catastrophe happened here. And, some small town or state that people will be so giving and helping each other. But, you know, it's funny because, you know, the U the U S besides, I guess the civil war and maybe the original revolutionary war, 
The only other thing that happened here, um, besides uh, the Oklahoma City bombing, that was a domestic, mm-hmm. and then 9-11, the people came together. They really came together, and we came, as Americans, came together. But we've been so divided for so long. Like, you could no longer, as a teacher, a professor, I used to say to the kids, you know, this one plus one is two, and they'd be like, okay, and they write it down. And obviously, I'm teaching college, so that's not what I would say. But now, <laughs> I could just picture it. 15 hands up. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. Conspiracy theory. Fake news. Fake news. I mean, that's where it's come from. So it's really disheartening to see this. And going back to that, this country has never, and the things that I've mentioned, besides them, has ever had a war. We don't live like these people do. We are not torn apart and have these devastating, horrible wars. Because we're the United States. So it doesn't happen to us. So when it happens to somebody else, the big word is empathy. Thank you. So why don't you have empathy for people as humans? That's it. That's 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 it. Just have some empathy. I mean, they didn't do anything. They didn't start the fire. Yeah. Yeah, Today on on, uh, Steve Hunter's show, today I was on Steve Hunter's show. And one of the things I said is that people are a lot closer to each other than than you think. Uh, People want to have conversations with each other, as you think, but there are external forces that need us not to do that. When I tell, I I always use a statement that says uh, our economic system requires us to be at each other's throats, so they have to create all these differences among us. And I stick by that because that, that is... Look, let's give an example. You, uh, you, you would think that somebody like Eric is a diametrically opposed to you, Bridge, and you saw what happened when we got together on a call. We sat down, we talked. There's mostly agreement because people realize that actually <laughs> we have a lot more in common. But the idea that these guys put out there is they don't want us to talk to each other. They want us to fear each no. other so that we don't talk because if we talk to each other, we will get together and figure out that that it's just a few that's really screwing with us. And, uh, you know, I mean, it, it was it's like that story in my book with the lady, the woman who when she realized she was agreeing with me and I and I confessed that I was one of those real left wing progressives. Her first answer was, you're so nice. Well, that is the issue. We're not talking to each other. Uh, and and you know we're letting we're letting these guys dictate what we talk about. Let me give an example. You notice, uh, and Eric, I'm gonna use you as a template here. Eric kept on bringing up that subdivision close to where we live that supposedly is dumping sewage in Lake Houston and that supposedly has a lot of undocumented workers there or whatever. That village has been there for for a very long time, for over a decade, decades, right? Uh, it's all the, the owner of the, the big plot of land there also is a big donor to the Republican government. Somebody decided that this was a good messaging opportunity to to extend the message, to make it differently. And all you could hear, uh, let's say my brother Eric talk about and a lot of other folks in the right wing media was this little subdivision here in Texas. And 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 they had everybody singing that same tune. We have to change that. Like sheep. Yeah, like sheep well, two, this, being led by a bad shepherd. Well, you there's know? two things. There's uh, divide them and you can conquer them. Mm-hmm. And then there's keep them ignorant and you can control them. Exactly. And that is exactly what is going on. Exactly. Keep them ignorant, you can control them, divide them. What does that, that stupid mean that keeps going around with the king and he's looking at his subjects? And half of them <laughs> yeah. have pitchforks and half of them have, um, I don't know, arrows. I don't know, have to have something. Right, else. right. And the guy says, we don't have to make a war. Just make the pitchfork people hate the other people and we win. Yeah. And that's divide and conquer. That is it. That's but how it I works. I want to say the, the, the Ask Egberto thing, you know, I haven't been on for months because of, you know, duties and obligations and fixing the crap. But... Speaking especially to Eric, who we get on each other's nerves. I know I must get on his nerves. 
but and I want to slap him sometimes. But when I hear him talk and not type, <laughs> I understand him more. Because you know, cause when you're typing, you're trying to get that message out quick. Here, go, yeah. But when you stop and think about it, especially when you're walking around all buff and shit, like he does, <laughs> and he's killing me. I'm just watching him. I'm like, oh, my God. And you hear him. I can hear the empathy in his voice. I can hear what he's saying and how he's, it's coming across. I can hear him change his mind before he says it. So, yes, the man's there. Man's ear, whatever that's called, Eric. <laughs> um, but it, it, you know, it changes your view. That's why I think, and I encourage people to go to the Ask Alberto, and even if you don't talk, even if you don't show your face, just listen, and then you're going to get a different idea of the people who are on our PDR posse, which, by the way, I named. And um, you'll get a different point of view on people. And so yeah. I really encourage people to go there. I really do. You know, that's what I, mean, I learned being a I part of the. Think. That's what I learned being a part uh, of the coffee party. As you know, as a board member of the coffee party and participated in it for quite some time. And 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 again, that's one of the places I learned that you have to. And and not only that, you have to have a thick skin, right? In other words, you know, when it is like when uh, Mike Cesac says certain things and all of that. Uh, I if we have a talk, if I sit down and had a cup of coffee with Mike Cesac, would be completely different than some of the stuff he throws. I think some of the stuff he throws on the on the chat is crap, and I know some of the stuff he throws on the screen is crap, and he knows it's crap as well. But it's that sort of a thing that happens behind text, right? But this is my second thing of coffee, Eric. <laughs> the second one full. But anyway, um, but. Again, if I sit down with this guy, I know I would like the I everybody that's in this chat right now. I am exactly sure that I can have a good cup of coffee and have a good time with every single person in this room I, right now. I feel the same way. I think that once you get down to basics, we all want the same thing. Yes. And I, it, it, we're just human. Yeah. We all have the and, same needs and wants hey. and desires. Hey, hey wait, hold, hold on a second, Bridge. Listen to Mike C. Says, Egberto, we've talked on the phone before, and you ended up agreeing with me. Well, you must have said something sensible, Mike. And that, and, and you just <laughs> proved Bridge's point. You just proved Bridge's point. <laughs> exactly. I mean, that's you know? all that you just need to talk to people. Right. You know, that's, that's it. Just talk to them. I don't yeah. want to take up much more time. I well, we are about over so. now. I, I, but you know, let me tell you this: I want more people to call in and have a conversation uh, as well because I think it moves things forward. So people should call in more often. I, I, I am paying every month for this, this, this line. So you guys should use the line that we have for you to call right into the program. Thank you so kindly. Yes, I, I, I impose those people to please call. Right, uh, Bridge, uh, you right, are. Uh, you. Uh, let me, wait, 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 wait. I want everybody to know, Bridge is a, is a huge asset to this program. She takes care of quite a bit to help us out here. So thank you very much, Bridge. You have a wonderful rest of your day, okay? You too. Bye, guys. All right. Anyway, folks, uh, Mike says, I was talking about farming and the crap that the government did that hurt family farmers. And you were right, sir. The only thing that I think I added to that was the government did that under the duress from private sector. but. We can talk about that another day. Anyway, we're coming close to the end of the program here. And I want you guys to become supporters. So please, if you will, uh, those of you who are not supporters, please consider supporting the program. You know that what we stand for. Go to politicsdoneright.com slash support. That gives you many different ways in which you can support the program. Politicsdoneright.com slash support. But I have another ask. I need a whole lot more subscribe, paid subscribers to our newsletter. And you're not doing something for nothing here. A paid subscriber gets all the books that I've already written and online, of course, as well as uh, any subsequent book that I write, as long as you're subscribing. And that is sort of my way of saying thank you for subscribing to the newsletter, but also wanting you to share the newsletter. And here is the newsletter to share. It's at politicsandright.com slash 
newsletter, politicsandright.com slash newsletter. Please become a paid supporter of the newsletter for the, the, the little things that we give you for that. All right, I got to get out of here. My name is Egberto Willis. I thank you so kindly for being here. Again, this is Politics Then Right, and you guys know exactly how I end this baby. I am what? Out! We spend a lot of time deconstructing the news, trying to, trying to parse it into a form that everybody can understand. We try to find those little nitpicks where uh, it goes, it flies above the fray, etc. If you really like these videos that we do, I want to ask a big favor. Please go ahead, number one, subscribe to our channel, and number two, please join if you can. Thank you so kindly for watching. Keep watching. Please remember to share. We must populate the entire internet with our progressive message, a message that we know is what most Americans say that they want. So help us please join.